Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a quick overview of the build that I'm going to be doing on live stream tomorrow. Um, the live stream is either going to be on YouTube or on Twitch. I'm not really sure yet, but there will be an announcement, an announcement on the uh, Plex subreddit and as well as the uh, Plex Discord and my Discord. And I'm going to try to get that out tonight with this video. Um, I will also update this video with the link for the live stream. Um, just not sure whether I'm going to do on YouTube or Twitch right now. It's going to be whatever is more popular, what more what people think I should do. Um, so anyway, this is going to be a quick overview of the hardware for the $135 build uh, that I just the build guide that I just recently posted on the Plex subreddit um, with a couple changes, but they're pretty minor. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, I'll put a link in the description and you can kind of reference that as we go along. Um, and I'll just outline a couple of the changes I made uh, and why. So for the motherboard, um, this motherboard is a little bit different than the one that is in the build guide. This one's the Supermicro X8 SI6-F. And um, the dash F means that it has built-in IPMI and I'll show you that now. So here's the dedicated IPMI port, and then you have dual NIC here. Um, if you don't know what IPMI is, it's super handy for turning on your server, turning it off, uh, getting into the BIOS. You can do full KVM, which means keyboard, video, mouse, through IPMI, through the network interface. And uh, it's really just a useful, super handy thing to have. Um, all of the all of the boards I have right now have it, and I wouldn't say that I use it all the time, but it's there if you need it. Um, this board differs from the other one uh, in the build guide uh, because it also has onboard SAS via a uh, Broadcom 2008 controller, and you can see the two SAS ports here, as well as six onboard SATA which I believe the other one does have. It either has four or six, uh, but that's still the same. Um, this one also has six DIMMs. I believe the other one has four. Not a huge deal. We're only gonna be using 12 gig anyway. Um, but yeah. So we're, gonna, we're actually gonna be using FreeNAS in this system. And uh, since we have uh, the onboard 2008 we're going to be flashing that to IT mode, which just gives direct drive access to FreeNAS. We don't want to use any of the hardware RAID or anything like that that this, this system has. Uh, we're just going to be using um, all software RAID through FreeNAS. Let me adjust my, just turn the camera down just slightly. All right. And we have six two gig sticks of HP branded Hynix RAM. Uh, this is 2RX8, which is required for compatibility with this motherboard. Um, these are uh, PC3 10600R, which means it's registered, and it's uh, ECC D DDR3. So we'll have six sticks, six DIMMs, 12 gig total. Should be more than enough for the amount of hard drives and everything that FreeNAS requires. Um, CPU that we chose was the Intel X3450. It's an older Xeon, socket 1156. Um, it is the second highest model available for this. There's the X3460, X3470 as well. Uh, this one's base clocked at 2.66. Let me see what it boosts up to. Eight meg cache, two point six six base, and three point two turbo. It's a ninety five watt TDP CPU. Uh, it's quad core with eight threads, so it's basically an i seven uh, with turbo boost. But you can't overclock it, at least not in this board. Um, this one was twenty two dollars. 
and I think the X3470 was almost twice the price for only a couple a couple more megahertz. It really was not worth the extra cost. So this one should be more than capable for whatever the system needs. Um, oh, and I didn't go over the motherboard costs. The motherboard was $65. Uh, it was listed at $85. I did OB, uh, Orbest offer, OBO at $65. The seller instantly accepted it. I kind of thought he would get back to me and and shoot me an offer back, but um, it's 65 free shipping. Really can't go wrong, especially with the the additional two SAS ports, which can break out into um, another eight SATA, giving you 14 SATA total. And I guess that'll kind of segue into why we have these two cables. These are forward SAS breakout cables. They have an 8087 connector on the one end, and then you have four SATA on the other end. And um, so long as we're going to be using these this in IT mode, it'll just give direct drive access, basically plug and play. Um, so we can do 14 total drives natively just from this board without adding in uh, a SAS card, HBA, RAID card, anything like that, which I think is pretty neat. Um, speaking of FreeNAS and uh, storage, FreeNAS runs, uh, I guess is installed and runs off of a flash drive, so you don't actually need a hard drive or solid state drive to install the OS on. Um, I've got a pair of SanDisk 8 gig flash drives here, and luckily enough, there's a pair of USB ports on the board, actually, you know, internally. Um, so we'll just plug these two in here, uh, install FreeNAS onto the one, and then what we'll do is we'll mirror to the other so that in case one fails, which I really doubt it would fail. Um, you'll always have, or, you know, not you, but the system will always have a, a like a RAID 1 uh, bootable disk. So it can boot off of either one. And then if one does fail, just unplug it, replug it, reassign the drive, and then it'll rebuild. The CPU cooler is a different model than the one I recommended in the build guide. The one I, I recommended in the build guide, which is this, like standard type um, i5, i7 CPU cooler with the push pins. And unfortunately, I had one of those, but this board has a back plate that is uh, pretty much super glued on. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that you can't use the push pin style uh, coolers without taking this back plate off. I wasn't even going to bother taking the back plate off because it is too much of a pain in the ass. Um, so I just got this cooler. It was only $25 on Amazon and it's actually a little bit nicer of a cooler but it's a little bit more expensive. Um, but it'll mount right up to this back plate. I don't even need to modify it and it's good to go. And uh, you can tell that this thing's pretty heavy duty. I'm not, I'm not going to risk damaging the board just to get this back plate off, but um, so that's it for the cooler. Uh, the case is a Cooler Master, let's see if I can pull it up here, the Cooler Master N400. The N400 has eight hard drive bay support uh, natively and two five and a quarter bays that can be adapted into three and a half bays uh, via these brackets here. Um, this will do five and a quarter to a single three and a half or five and a quarter to two, two and a half inch for SSDs or laptop size hard drives. Um, so we got two of these. We'll have uh, 10 bays without adding anything else and that should be more than enough to get started. Um, we're only going to be using six hard drives just to start and then whoever gets this build I guess we'll be adding six or eight drives later down the road. Um, so yep. Speaking of hard drives, there are six refurb Hitachi three terabyte drives and these particular ones I got from Refurb for Less on eBay. 
These were $49.99 each with free shipping. So $300 in hard drives, and there's six of them, which gives us, quick math, that gives us 18 terabytes, uh, 18 terabytes raw, and I need to talk to, uh, talk to the client for this build, but from what I recall, we're gonna be doing RAID Z2 in FreeNAS, which is essentially RAID 6. So we'll have a little bit less than, uh, a little bit less than 12 terabytes usable, all said and done between the three hard drives. But we'll have uh, two drive failover, two drive parity um, with Z2. And the other things that I don't have on my desk right now, uh, Obviously the case I don't have here. Um, the SATA power cables, which uh, just make it a little bit easier plugging in all the power cables and then just plugging one connector into that like chain of power cables. Um, what else? Oh, uh, standard SATA cables. I'm not gonna be using the SATA cables for this. I'm gonna actually use uh, the SAS breakout and then I'll just, include the SATA cables with the build um, but everything that the board needs will be good to go from uh, you know from from the box and uh, yeah that's just a quick overview of the hardware we're going to be using um, the build should be pretty straightforward shouldn't take too long um, gonna try to get a lot of the free NAS install uh, actually through the video, which is gonna be an interesting challenge. I'm gonna have to test that tonight and see how that goes. But my plan is to put a external video card in here just temporarily, and then take the HDMI from that into the capture card, and then uh, just kind of switch between the capture card, the head cam, uh, the tripod camera, and yeah, hopefully it'll just, everything will just show up nicely. Uh, you know, here's to hoping that'll work. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. This is kind of my first foray into doing a live stream build. Um, I thought the hardware overview would just be a nice little intro, so I don't have to go over as much during the stream. Uh, but of course, I will be taking questions and uh, trying to interact with chat as much as I can during the during the live stream. But uh, yeah, so I hope to see you guys then, and that's all for now.